Hope springs eternal, and spring is the time of plans and projects. You probably heard those pretty inspirational seasonal quotes before. Kind of gives us an idea of the hope of spring, which usually hits historically anywhere from March 19th through the 21st. However, I'm not sure that promise of hope really hit home when spring hit in 1872, at least not for the occupants of Idaho's territorial prison. March 21st, 1872 was the first full day of spring back then, and that day, 11 men were being moved out of their shaky wooden structure in Idaho City to a bigger, more secure territorial prison. You see, convict escapes were common back then, but the hopes of ducking out of your sentence early were being dashed by having to be housed within the stone cold surroundings of Idaho's old penitentiary, which was brand new on this day 150 years ago. For decades, it's dark history. The old Idaho penitentiary has drawn the interest of those attracted to atrociousness. And true crime, of course, that is a, a huge thing that people are, are into. And there aren't too many places that were built back then that are still around. Exactly. Yeah. Anthony Perry's job is to teach people about this place. And try to humanize it. Which takes us back to the beginning. The Idaho Territory was barely into its adolescence. The population around 15,000 and climbing. More people meant more opportunity for crime and more space needed for those convicted of said crimes. The original territorial prison was in Idaho City and in 1869 they decided to bring it here to this location. This location happened to be a stone's throw from a sufficient supply of sandstone. So they thought we've got building material. They started construction actually uh, broke ground in April of 1870. And they invited the public to be present apparently. According to a notice in the Idaho Statesman, then considered a radical paper, a general attendance is requested in order that all may view the commencement of an edifice that may someday be their home, where the moral atmosphere inside the walls is a far higher tone than that of the rest of the territory. Anyway, construction commenced by local workmen. Who were paid about four to six dollars a day to, to construct that territorial prison. And the cornerstone was laid, ironically, on Independence Day, 1870. And in March of 1872, the first men, the first 11, arrived here from Idaho City, from the Boise County Jail. Those men... Murder, uh, grand larceny, so the, the violent federal crimes that were being committed in the territory of Idaho. Were all housed in this one building. There were 14 cells per tier, and they faced opposite directions. So seven here, seven there, three tiers. In the 1880s, that doubled. That decade saw the first woman inmate as well as its youngest. The youngest was actually a 10 year old. Um, his name was James Oscar Baker. He was convicted of killing E.T. Williams in Soda Springs. Those early days also saw the security get tested. So within the first month of the territorial prison opening up, so in April of 1872, we had our very first escape. This a uh, guy named Al Priest, he was in on a highway robbery on a 15 year sentence. He's outside kind of stacking rock. Inside, another prisoner named Ahud is cleaning dishes. And Al asks for a, a sip of water. And so he goes inside, he's got a ball and chain on like all these men because there's no fence, there's no wall. And so he goes inside and he finds a pair of keys, he unshackles his ankle, he climbs up and out a window and takes off. And uh, Ahud sees this happen. He takes the key, unshackles himself, follows, and uh, they both escape. They mo both make a run for it. Al Priest was reportedly tracked down uh, several miles away and, and shot and killed um, by either a U.S. Marshal or by the rancher that he was stealing horses from. And uh, they actually never capture Ahud. He is. He disappears and is never seen or heard from again. It took five years to get a 12 foot fence, another three years for a new cell house. And by 1894, they had completed the wall and the administration building. And that doubled the capacity, but quickly realized that they needed more. And so by the end of that decade, by 1899, they started construction on the cell house that we're actually in right now. And they completed this in 1911. In 1942, that original single cell house had been converted to a chapel. And it's, it doesn't look that big to hold, you know, 80 men in this, in this structure yeah, in the 1880s. It's, yeah, it's 
disheartening to think of that overpopulation and how tough life in here would have been. By 1954, with the maximum security cell block built, the penitentiary was at capacity in both buildings and jailbirds. After the 1950s, uh, just over 600. And those close quarters could lead to questionable conditions. The conditions, they, they could be harsh. And they could lead to riots. Just wanting to make a statement so that people in the community would know what the conditions were like in here. Um, but 1973 in March, um, there's a major riot, the final major riot at the institution, and several buildings are burned, including that chapel, the territorial prison. The prisoners intended to torch the dining hall, not the chapel, but the damage was done. By the end of the year, the old penitentiary was closed. Early history, you know. Oh yeah, remember that cornerstone? So they go around with metal detectors in each of these buildings, and finally it, it pings right here. Well, it contained a time capsule, which wasn't discovered until 1970. They said it was one of the best uh, kept time capsules in, in early history of Boise of territorial Idaho. So it's an amazing discovery that they had and it's, it's a really uh, an amazing part of our collection. Almost as amazing as the collection of stories still housed here. 150 years that this institution has, has been around and, and people can still come in and, and see this artifact and this, this part of our history. A couple other numbers to share about the history of the old Idaho pen. There were more than 13,000 inmates housed there over the 101 years it was in use. And there were more than 500 escape attempts during that time. 90 of them were like Amud and were successful, which is a pretty decent rate of return. There were 10 executions performed at the old pen. All were hanged, but only one took place in the modern maximum security building built in the 1950s. The rest were done on a wooden scaffold in the yard. In 1974, the Idaho State Historical Society took over the Idaho State Penitentiary and began offering tours of the place. And they do events like on Halloween and Valentine's Day. And tonight, there will be a celebration of its 150 years. It starts at 6 with presentations beginning at 6.30. And your $6 donation will get you in and out in a matter of hours, unlike the previous inhabitants.